to one and all present over here. Thank you so much to all the educators out there who have been consistently joining the Super Sunday workshops. For all the teachers or all the people who have joined for the first time, my name is Vasudevan and I am from Super Teacher Edu Reforms Private Limited. We have this habit, tradition, and a custom of meeting all the educators every Sunday from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock uh, over a brief topic, over a topic which is quite elaborate in nature, but a brief introduction to the same with 45 minutes to one hour of interaction with the teaching community across. Uh, the main purpose is to provide exposure and an awareness on topics that we might really require, but not really get sufficient time to actually explore and go through. Sometimes we might tend to even forget that something like this actually ex uh, existed or something like that. So uh, the point over here is uh, Super Sunday workshops for all the people who are joining new. I would request you to join regularly every Sunday. In case if you want to get regular notifications, you could join the Telegram group and I shall sh send you the link of the same. Uh, it'll be present in the reflection form that will come at the last. All, or, or else you can directly visit the superteacher.in website where you will get the upcoming events category. Now, we have been conducting these sessions for a very long time. And today, it's the 49th session. Actually, 50, one of the sessions was actually not live streamed. But 49th session on YouTube live as well. And uh, the 50th session will be there the next Sunday. And there's going to be a lot of recognitions to all those people who have been regularly attending these webinars. Uh, it's, it's, it's imperative and it's my responsibility to make sure uh, the, the consistency, the discipline and, and uh, the efforts that's taken by a particular educator to join on every Sunday 10 o'clock uh, has to be somewhere recognized up to a certain extent. Whatever minimum that we could do, I would definitely do it in the next Sunday. I would request everybody to participate and let's see, there will be certain categories. One of the categories is definitely going to be all the people who have attended more than 45 Sundays or Sunday workshops. And if you have the certificates with you, there'll be a certain kind of certificate and also something else. And similarly, if you have attended more than 40 Super Sunday workshops, then there's going to be, that's another category and certain recognitions. These are the major two categories. And apart from that, certificate of impact is another thing where some of you have actually referred these things to many other educators across and I would like to recognize and respect them as well. So we'll be talking about all these things in the next Super Sunday workshop. But the main point of mentioning that right now is in case if anyone has any discrepancy, any uh, particular uh, you know problem with the certificate and things like that, please do let me know. Message me before itself. Mail us before itself at Vasudevan at the rate superteacher.in and I shall get in touch with you to sort out any issues if you have. So this is from the perspective of recognition. Let's get on to the second announcement, something very important. Uh, this is with respect to the continuous professional development program. In case if any teacher would like to complete the 25 hours CPD, I would request you to please join the batch from tomorrow onwards, which is happening at our, uh, you know, by the trainers from super teacher. Uh, these certificates could be submitted to the principal and could be considered for your mandatory CPDRs. The charges are rupees 100 per hour per session in case it's completely as per the CBC norms. And uh, you could join together from a particular school if you do that. You could, you could definitely work out on some discounts and uh, happy to help. So before March 15th, I think uh, we need to complete some CPDRs. Do get in touch if you require any support on that. These are the major two announcements that I had to make. Now, let's quickly get on to the main topic, Montessori way of education. What exactly it is all about? Why are we here talking about Montessori education? See, something really nice about the Western uh, countries is uh, they have documented things really nicely. I mean, you could see that, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the each and every pedagogical aspects that we do in day-to-day -day life, uh, it's actually well documented in a piece of paper. It's quite an elaborate paper. And people publish that paper and use those paper for reference. Just for example, uh, let's take about Bloom's taxonomy. Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy is considered to be a kind of the framework for any teacher to teach the students in their various learning categories and aspects. Now, uh, knowledge, skills and attitude, which is cognitive, psychomotor and affective domain, is not something that you do not know about. It's just that it's properly structured, it's well arranged, and it's well documented, which makes it easy for the educators across the globe to use it, to manifest it. Similarly, Montessori way of education is another well documented pedagogy. 
I'll repeat it. Montessori education is not a curriculum. It's a pedagogy. It's a teaching style. It's an environment that is created for the students. That's what we are here to get into. And you'll get a very good perspective. Some of us would be doing this already in our school. I believe almost all of us. However, there's a seriousness to the whole process. Let's completely understand with Dr. Maria Montessori, uh, the one who actually began this uh, you know, movement of Montessori way of education. And this is how it actually looks like. And I also got one very good video about that. I would like to share that as well eventually. So Montessori way of education, 49th Super Sunday workshop. I would like to welcome everyone. Here we go. So the first one. So Dr. Maria Montessori, this is how she looks like. She was born in 1870 till 1952. She lived an amazing life, impacting many people. And she's from Italy. Now, she has traveled across the globe and she's been in India for quite some time. I think seven years, if I'm not wrong. I'll talk about that as well. So she was the first woman to graduate medical school in Italy. Just imagine the first doctor or, or a medicine practitioner in a country. That's Maria Montessori. Now, uh, in 1896, right after her medical school work, uh, right after her physician uh, practice, she got into with children who are disabled and she got a, a passion of educating them. In fact, at that particular time, she was more interested to uh, form a school, conduct a school or run a school with her methodology for economically weaker sections and uh, the students who could not really, I wouldn't say disabled, but who needed extra support. And that was the purpose and perspective. But ironically, Montessori way of education is the one of the most expensive education systems, at least in our country or in, in other countries as well. It just became expensive somewhere in the pathway. And, and this Casa di Bambini in Rome, his, uh, his, uh, it, it's the first school that, that uh, uh, you know, she started in the year 1907. And the best part is here in this case, there was no specific curriculum as such. Now, what exactly, you know, she wanted to have, why she wanted the students to choose what they want to learn right from, you know, toddler's age. Why was that even a point at that particular time? You'll get very good insights in further slides. But anyways, she published her first book called as the Montessori Method, sharing her educational philosophy. Some of you would have already gone through certain uh, materials of Montessori education, some books you would have definitely read. If not, then I would I recommend you to please go through it. It's an elaborate information, very scientific in nature, and you will be able to connect with it pretty easily. And the reason is, that's coming in the next slide. Uh, 1914 to 52, lectures globally, establishing Montessori schools worldwide, which includes India as well. Then she finds the Montessori Association, forms basically, it's not founds, Montessori Association. And in 1952, she passes away, leaving a lasting impact. I would like to play a small video um, of Maria Montessori interview. And this is very rare. Uh, luckily, I got this on YouTube. Even you can get this. But uh, look into this. You'll get a very good understand understanding. And, and try to find the Indian reference over here. You will love that thing about this. Here we go. Maria Montessori, la geniale rinnovatrice dei sistemi di educazione dell'infanzia, è tornata in patria. Vi dirà lei stessa qualcosa del suo esilio. Please watch out for the Mancavo subtitles. Mancavo dall'Italia fino dal 34, l'anno in cui hanno chiuso tutte le scuole col mio metodo. Rimasi in Europa fino al 39, poi dopo sono andata in India e lì sono rimasta per sette anni, dei quali per cinque anni fui internata come nemico italiano. Io non potevo andare nei vari luoghi, ma venivano da tutte le parti gli indiani a me e in questo modo ho potuto preparare circa 1500 maestri. Quanto tempo rimarrà in Italia? Io sono qui ospite del governo italiano per due mesi. Credo che sia per rimettere il mio metodo nelle scuole e anche per applicare alla nuova educazione i miei principi Adesso io andrò per qualche mese in India e dopo, se Dio vuole, tornerò in Europa. Se i bambini sapessero chi era Montessori, questo omaggio diventerebbe plebiscito. Il suo è un metodo di liberazione morale e mentale dell'infanzia. 
Alle piccole ali che si aprono, questa donna infonde il coraggio e la responsabilità di tentare il volo. So that's a brief interview of uh, Dr. Maria Montessori. And the important aspect over here is, uh, it's just one and a half minutes video, though uh, she mentions about her presence in India. She trained around 1,500 teachers in that particular time and always her wish was to come back to India. Uh, she found there are various other archives, archived videos, which we can't really get into in this one hour session. I would like to request everyone to please explore on that. She was fascinated with Indian education system back at that time. She was also quite happy with the way Indians perceived information. There was a lot of acceptance whenever some new methodology was introduced. They were quite broad minded. Now, it talks a lot about our ancestors. Uh, and, and the way of education uh, which happened across. Though this particular document clearly mentions that uh, Maria Montessori actually uh, trained 1,500 teachers, I very strongly believe there could be, there could be scenarios where she would have got inspired by the existing education system in India. Well, she founded M Montessori method way before that. Hence, there's a lot of credibility to this particular video. Hence the video. So when we talk about the Montessori way of education, what exactly does it comprise? What are we actually talking about? Let's get on with the next slide. That will give you a very good perspective. And that looks something like this. So what is Montessori education? These are the five major pillars. Well, it's, it's quite an elaborate document and you can see that in multiple websites. I'll show you some of the authentic websites from where we get this information. I'll also mention something very important. If there are parents out there, if there are teachers out there who have children uh, below the age of five right now, I'm pretty sure you would have searched on Amazon or basically on internet to find Montessori toys. There are toys that are labeled as it's a Montessori toy, but the authentication of that has to be cross verified. And with this workshop, probably you could do that up to a certain extent. Not all toys come under that particular category. In fact, every toy that's fit with a motor, which is run by a battery, is not at all coming under the category of Montessori. So uh, if we read more about it, if you understand Montessori view of education, you'll understand that this is very similar to toy based pedagogy that's already mentioned in our NEP 2020. So I hope you're getting the perspective. And in toy-based pedagogy, we clearly talk about indigenous toys that are made in India. Let's, let's talk about it. So first thing is child-led learning. Montessori classrooms emphasize self-directed activities and exploration, allowing, I'm sorry, allow, uh, allowing the children to follow their natural curiosity. Uh, very important point over here. So it's, it, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's, it seems that uh, human beings, right from the time when they're born, we have got the natural instinct of learning. That's why we observe things and that's why we like to play around with things. And that is why it's, we are always curious. But uh, this is self-directed. But the moment it comes uh, under somebody's influence or some environment's influence of you have to learn this, that's where the learning curiosity gets, uh, I would say, deteriorated. So the point here is, if at all a classroom is set up in a manner where the students are allowed to choose what they want to do, that's something called as Montessori education. So the first and the primary point is child-led learning. And this is an intrinsic quality of a human being. Second, prepared environment. Now, when it comes to a Montessori way of education, that means in a particular school, I'll repeat it. This is not a curriculum. This is way of teaching. It's more from the perspective of pedagogy. As a teacher, hence, even if you are from a CBC school or an ICC school or a Cambridge school or an international baccalaureate school, environment is what matters and Montessori could be employed, uh, employed or deployed across all these board categories. Prepared environment is the place where the classroom is set up by the teachers uh, so that they can facilitate whatever the children are learning. So that's with respect to prepared environment and it's very, very important. Montessori class does not have a traditional setup of a bench uh, the desk, like the way we have in our regular classrooms. No, it's not like that. Sometimes it could be a round table, the children are sitting across. And if you are aware about it, and if you're already doing this in the school, I would request you to please put it in the chat so that the other teachers can see and understand. Uh, separately, they also have uh, uh, some very important uh, aspect of environment, which is called a sensory understandings. It's important for every prepared environment, every classroom to have all the five sense organs uh, uh, the effect of all these within the uh, within the learning process. There should be taste, there should be touch, there should be smell, 
uh, in touch, smell, there should be vision and hearing as well. Well, we know about it, right? Toy based pedagogy also talks about it. Well, that's called as prepared environment where the students can choose what they want to learn. Then there is something called as mixed age groups. And this is very, very fascinating. Now, why mixed age groups is fascinating? They don't have all the age students sit together. It's like uh, three to six, they sit together. Then six to nine, or seven to nine, they sit together. And it gives a quality of leadership to the children. Even if they are young, they can they can lead the children who are about their age. The age disparity never comes. If at all, there is a teacher in the school who thinks that, uh, you know, I am well experienced and you are just a junior. I think such kind of thoughts can be eradicated somewhere when you're born uh, under such kind of system. In fact, there are many uh, pre-primary or nursery schools, even in India, where they encourage multiple age students to sit in the same class. I was also fascinated. I'm forgetting the teacher's name. I think she was from Tamil Nadu, Neveli, if I'm not wrong. Uh, she actually very nicely mentioned in one of the project work that she was supposed to do on Indian education system. Uh, she said that students of eighth standard can come to grade six or five and teach them. Or students of ninth standard can come to grade six or seven and teach them. It's like higher grade students coming down to the lower grades and teaching them. Similarly, lower grade students can go to the next class and do some project work and show them. This is a very nice idea. The second idea that was put out was rather than asking the children to uh, just learn a particular concept or a topic and answer the questions as given in the exam, how about allowing the children to prepare question papers instead of answer sheets? Think about it. Allowing the children to prepare question papers will give better understanding and scope of bird's eye view for the children to know what exactly they are supposed to learn. That is why they probably say that is why they probably say that whenever you learn something, learn as if you're going to teach this to someone else. Your learning perspective changes. And all these are coming under Montessori category. So that's from mixed age perspectives. Then there is something called as intrinsic motivation that we just uh, understood about the focus on cultivating a love for learning, not external rewards, encouraging a lifelong pursuit of knowledge. Uh, the reward for a particular learning is supposed to be dealt from within. That means I try to learn something and I've understood that. And the moment I understand that there is some, some sort of ecstasy, some sort of happiness that, wow, this is how it works. I, I really understand that. Now, that happiness that we're talking about is a reward for yourself. Now, this particular reward is completely intrinsic and we are not really worried about if the other person has understood or not. But the grading system that we talk about, you know, you got A, you got B. Uh, this is not allowed in Montessori. Though the teachers can have a track of where a particular child is standing uh, with respect to certain learning outcomes and objectives, but the students should never know about it. And Montessori education, again, I'll repeat it. It's not a curriculum. It's a way of education. It's pedagogy. Sometimes we might think that Achha, Montessori matlab only pre-primary and primary. No, it's also for senior students, even till 12th standard. But the problem here is till 12th standard, Montessori apply karna. Applying Montessori is a very, very difficult task. You need to find the right prepared environment. You need to really have experts coming down uh, and, and visiting the schools and guiding the students regularly. It will become a chaos, especially in, in countries like China and India, where the population is huge. At least I've seen some classrooms where 60 to 70 students are sitting in one classroom. Now, that's, that's, that's quite a vision. <laughs> Montessori is definitely not possible. Uh, Oh, yes, Anjana, ma'am, that's interesting. Oh, wow. Pushpalata, ma'am, you've already done that. Okay. Yes, Math Lab is one good example of Math Lab or Science Lab where you set up. It's one good example of Montessori way of education, probably. Sometimes on mat as well. Oh, you've got these tables. <laughs> Lovely. Let's let's go to the last one. Respect individuality is something, uh, uh, you know, uh, amazing about. So respect individuality is all about see, all the children can choose whatever they want to learn. And uh, when they come up with some sort of an achievement, it cannot be compared with another activity. Like you, your activity is quite simple. Anybody can do it. But his activity is quite difficult. See, he has done a better job. No, no, that should not happen. So that's what they try. Respect individuality. Each child's unique pace and learning style are valued, fostering self-confidence and emotional well-being. So uh, here in this case, uh, okay, that's great, Shilpa, ma'am. Thank you so much for that. 
yeah mixed stage classroom that's that's really important to have a uh, circle time is a very good uh, terminology uh, for those ma'am that's generally done maybe before the classroom begins recapitulating on what happened in the past but again circle time is more oriented towards a teacher guiding the students to recapitulate but here in this case the teachers are not at all involved there is no circle time at all in montessori way of education let, let, let let's get let's see one video on what exactly a montessori classroom looks like i think that will give you a very good perspective well again i got into over at least you know 75 80 videos and i've got one video which really explains things very well in a short span of time but this is not from india and whichever videos i saw in india that's a mix of montessori education with uh, various other curriculums as well which i didn't find to be i mean rather than saying i didn't find this to be effective i found this to be effective please watch this video teachers you'll get a very good perspective on what montessori classroom looks like yeah exit curriculum actually talks about that to a large extent so for that let me quickly uh i think you're able to see this i've shared the sound and you should be able to see the video in 3 2 and 1 Basically, a Montessori school is a school designed by Maria Montessori, who created the first Montessori school about 100 years ago. So it's very different from the traditional classroom. Children do not sit in one seat all day. They move around. They go. They choose act, their own activities rather than having the teacher choose for them. And again, that's a key part of one of Maria Montessori's uh, observations: is that children internally they know what's important to them, and they. know what they need to do. For the Casa classroom, the class is divided from 3 to 6 year olds. Um the lower elementary is 6 to 9 year olds and the upper elementary is 9 to 12 year olds. And again that 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 works just beautifully because you have this age mix and uh and over the course of the 3 years in the classroom the children kind of progress to become that older brother and sister and they're kind of helping everyone out and and uh, becoming a real leader within the classroom. The teacher is not in charge. The teacher um is a link to the classroom, we're a link to the environment and a link to the Montessori materials. We introduce the materials to the children, we call them lessons. Um but we're not the only ones. It's the whole class helps to run the whole environment. In a traditional Montessori school, there is no tests, no marks, no grades. Cuz quite often what the test does is gives this child a sense of look at how much i don't know we definitely don't don't need the test at the younger ages but even at the older ages where the children are getting into uh grades 3 4 and 5 and 6 um again that's the the teacher's role the teacher's role is to figure out what this child knows and how well they know it um children don't have a negative connotation of the word work we do call it work in montessori but what is work it is purposeful activities um so they are free to choose but they don't have complete freedom it's freedom within limits if done properly Uh, what a child gets from a Montessori environment is this love of learning. If they have a love of learning, they can move into any kind of environment at that point. They can go to a different kind of system of of uh, education or or a traditional or public school whatever it happens to be. And they usually adapt quite well because again, what's hopefully instilled in them is I love to learn, I love to uh work, I love to uh educate myself. We see children who come back and visit and everyone seems happy and and learning well like as though they've been learning well and and that they've adapted. Uh something that we really encourage parents to do is to involve their children at home in what we call practical life. Having the children see you handwriting shopping lists or writing things out so that they can see you doing these activities then they will pick them up and know that that is real life living. to help build the child's uh, self-esteem and self-confidence and to get them involved and feel good about themselves they need to be involved they need to feel a part of the family and we also know that all these activities uh um you know setting the table shoveling those are activities that really enhance a child's concentration focus uh they develop their um their control and coordination uh and what ultimately comes out of it is they develop their self-discipline and their and their will by the time they get up to uh you know teenage years 
they're usually quite uh, self-sufficient and they can you know, uh, do a lot of things on their own. One of the key concepts of Montessori is that um, Maria Montessori realized that children universally around the world, they develop in the same way, regardless of what country you're from or, or what nation you're from. Uh, every child is the same, and every child goes through these stages of development and, have, and has these certain needs at each stage. So based on that, Montessori, yes, it should be for every child, and uh, because, you know, every child should flourish within a, a Montessori classroom. So that's with respect to a brief idea on uh, what's actually present inside uh, Montessori schools. I think you would have got a perspective. Uh, do you remember teachers like uh, uh, whenever there used to be a, some sort of a festival, uh, 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 some, you know, Mela is or a fair is like uh, very common in India. And uh, as a child, when I used to go to these fair, uh, one common, a uh, lot of common toys, but one common toy that I was really fascinated with, which I really liked was uh, the kitchen set. You remember the kitchen set? Uh, it used to be quite small. And and uh, I've seen children actually, you know, they, they, they buy that and they cook food. And they have the small tiny glasses with which they prepare tea or coffee and uh, they give to the parents. Quite a sight to watch, right? Uh, well, that's, uh, that's taken seriously in Montessori. The students actually get into the process of making an actual coffee and tea. There was even one of the schools in Deni in Madurai, I mean near Madurai in uh, Tamil Nadu again, where it was a residential school. I'm forgetting the name of the school. Uh, I I went there for a teacher training program, but uh, uh, when the lunch time, I was surprised to see that some uh, eighth, ninth, and tenth standard students were coming out of the kitchen with the plates, uh, with the rice and everything. And uh, I was curious, like, how can you ask the children to do this work? You know, I was from child labor perspective. But surprisingly, the fact here is the children are always there in the kitchen who like cooking, actually. And they are involved with the, the the I would say, chef. Not really chef is not the right term. The people who are cooking over there, washing the utensils over there, are with the children and they, they collaborate and work. Some children cut the vegetables. It's completely from their own interest. Now, here in this case, it's just not about... Uh, you know, the fact of who should cook and not. It's also about the, uh, you know, basic understanding of, uh, you know, anybody can take the responsibility of anything if you like it. And that's where Montessori can become really successful. It, it's not something that's implemented within a school system. Well, that's up to a brief point of time just to learn something. But if you are getting an interest to a certain category, it could be cooking for this matter, uh, it, it could be taken seriously and done that. I mean, here the children were there in the hostel. So that's something with respect to the agency of a particular child. I'll repeat it. Student agency is a terminology that's given to the people who take that responsibility of doing something. So if a child would like to do the job of cleaning in the school, they can, you know, they're, they're allowed to do it. It's just that the environment has to be created like that. But for such kind of incidents in schools, there are schools where the parents come back to the school and say that, you know, we pay so much of fees, we do so much of things, and you're making my child, uh, you know, keep their hands on the cow dung and say that you're talking about gardening. So it's completely fine to touch the cow dung if you're actually teaching gardening and the child is happy about it. Yeah. So there's going to be, again, a lot of, uh, you know, debates and arguments with the parents and the teachers that what's good and bad, still the school thrives with their vision and mission. And, and that's that's really important. So implementation of Montessori way of education in India was quite easy from primary perspective and pre-primary perspective. But at secondary levels, it was quite a challenge because the apparatus, the materials, the prepared environment that we're talking about was not that easy to set up. Just imagine a child in grade nine talking about or learning about uh, the astronomy part of it. And he wants to create something in real life. Well, these days, the students actually have these clay models of solar system. That's very basic in nature when we compare with Montessori. Montessori, they talk about uh, artificial moons. How about I create something like a satellite and that can really work? So that's quite a challenge for a school to you know establish or make such kind of... Uh, 
you know, layouts. So these age categories, depending on that, what's really affordable, what's really practical in India, it's quite adopted. If you know about a school which is completely Montessori methodology, you can put it on the chat if you know that. And even the syllabus is definitely a very big challenge. Uh, there are some very good websites from where the syllabus can be drafted. The curriculum could be taken up, but uh, implementation is again a challenge. I'll show some websites as well. More importantly, uh, one of the biggest schools in India, in fact, the biggest school is called a City Montessori School in Lucknow. I think you know that, right? Uh, it's your job to go back and research why that particular school is actually called as City Montessori School. You know that, then that's great. Put it on the chat. If you do not, if you do not, then please let me know. <laughs> Probably will not talk about that in this particular session. But yeah, for gardening, let the students use hand gloves. Ah, that's a good idea. Why not? That's a good idea, sir, Shrima. Yeah, uh, we have different clubs. Oh, you, you've got the clubs, Praveen, sir. That's, that's amazing. In fact, there were many schools where they talk about, uh, just not about, uh, you know, gardening as an aspect. There are pottery, carpentry. These clubs were also present. And this became more prevalent after pandemic, if I'm not wrong, once they mentioned about the skilled subjects. Am I right? I think so. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not much aware about the exposure factor over here. Great. Parents want more of writing work. <laughs> Let's understand the age category of Montessori and how the mixed age actually works. And that would be pretty much about Montessori and you would have got a pretty decent idea about it. Let's go for it. And here we go. Let me share my screen, teachers. This is the age categorization. I hope you're able to see the screen. So uh, Montessori age categorization, they prefer to have mixed age uh, curriculum. Uh, yeah, the major challenge is the number of students. Photography as well, Preeti ma'am, that's amazing. So here in this case, you can see that infancy from zero to 18 months, zero to one and a half years, focusing on sensory exploration, movement and fostering independence. That's amazing, right? Then toddlerhood is 18 months to three years, emphasizing language development, practical life skills and social interaction. Now, this is where the toddlerhood happens. They, they, they are not really worried about the reasoning, why so-and-so things actually happen. But the next category is that, which is called as early childhood. The most common starting point focusing on self-directed learning, exploration, and mastery of core skills like reading, writing, and basic math. That's coming under three to six years. Now, this is what is something called as foundational literacy and numeracy as per NEP, probably. You know, but even in FLN, they clearly mention about how much a particular child should know by a certain age. So there is no mix of age over there. In grade one, this much of letters have to be told properly. In grade two, two digit number sums should be uh, without the carryover. The children should be able to do. In third standard, the student has to do. So there is a proper mention of what should happen under each age. But that's not what Montessori prescribes. This learning has to be self-directed. Who knows that the child might learn way more and beyond what's there in the textbook? Right, it could be undermining as well, but there would be an area where the child is little ahead. So, your education system, our education system, should not stop the intrinsic quality of exploration for a particular child. That's what Montessori talks about. Lower elementary comes under six to nine years, where it's more from a reasoning perspective again. Upper elementary is nine to 12 years, encouraging independence, research skills, and preparing for adolescence, and 12 to 15 years, emphasizing on project-based learning, social-emotional development, exploration of personal interest. The word called as self-identity is introduced in uh, National Curriculum Framework School Education, where they talk about realization of who you are. What is the purpose of you being here? Something like that. Well, that's actually coming under middle school category. Finally, the high school, which is about preparing for higher education and careers, fostering intellectual curiosity and promoting global citizenship. Uh, I think uh, uh, Edison was a Montessori student. Albert Einstein was also a Montessori student, if I'm not wrong. Please research about it. Uh, in fact, the, the founders of Alphabet... Uh, I think Larry Page was a Montessori student and uh, many other eminent personalities out there. And they are all leaders right now who are leading the country with their amazing organizations. So this is with respect to the Montessori age categorization. I hope everyone got the perspective of these teachers. It's completely mix of age. So if you look into it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So according to this, there are only seven grades, not 10 or 12. And they're not age mapped. Three, three years under each category. 
would you like to put your child in montessori education please comment it on chat if possible comment it on youtube live as well teachers would you like to put your child in montessori education just think about it and just put it there just an opinion out there uh finally we are coming to the last part of this where we talk about the indian montessori foundation and an interesting website from where uh, we get to understand carry over and subtraction is with borrow lkg and ukg is guru no no uh, varsha rani ma'am it's uh, it's like uh, i do not know i would not say that's a good thing if the students are able to get it that's a good thing but that should not come from pressure point of view yeah montessori oh you were the teacher and your son <laughs> okay you strongly support it let's let's look into indian montessori foundation now this particular website gives you lot of clarity lot of information on resources for montessori way of education uh, in fact even there are courses to be completed for a particular teacher if you are interested you can actually come over here so uh, american Fo Mon Mon montessori foundation and indian montessori foundation could be considered as two websites from where you can get authentic information on what montessori education is all about in fact this whole session that we were talking about uh, is majorly inspired from these two websites so you have uh, the explore category where you can click on resources and as these are foundations non governmental organizations they don't get paid anywhere i mean you are accessing all the resources including the books the websites and all these things without paying them right so they expect some donations if possible so aid to life is one of the natural development of children one one sort of a curriculum so what you're supposed to do they give complete clarity over here make time connect your child you can just click on accept all i did that but yeah similarly again you go to um, you know association montes this is for uh, the international thing and uh, let me click on montessori principles here we are so montessori identify four phases in a child's life so according to aid to life this is another foundation where they talk about uh, birth to 6 as one category 6 to 12 as another category 12 to 18 and 18 to 24 so till the adult education gets completed montessori way of education is there and they also have the self discipline independence communication and movement these are the four areas under which the child can develop and here you have got the tips for this you have got the practical activities that, that the students can actually do uh for example let me click on sample activities i wanted to show this to you yeah wiping a table i hope you are able to see this yes uh, a small activity but uh, this is for self discipline watch this simple right <laughs> i'm pretty sure this is already happening uh, uh, in your home as well but rather than putting the dust in the dustbin your children probably would be bringing back the dust from the dustbin into the house allow that that's completely fine you know oh screen sharing stop somewhere i guess okay uh yeah you're right uh let me let me go back over here so if you have clothes that you can dry uh, on a rack or clothes line see sometimes uh you know there are times when uh, i've seen some people um while they're cooking or while they're cutting the vegetables the children come nearby so the mom or the mother generally says that don't come near because you're using sharp materials well there's a risk involved over there but rather than asking the children to go away it's better if you can give them some blunt knife or some sort of a plastic knife and they try to cut the carrot probably or they try to cut the onions probably you know that could be a good activity it's encouraged in montessori you should do that uh, in irrespective of uh, you know the problems that it might create your lunch might get delayed a little bit but there's a lifelong learning for the child that he can cook right a simple activity that's it similarly making choices is another important activity the students have to uh, have this uh, aspect of uh, decision making skills and uh, you would have done this activity in early childhood care and education where the people actually try to sort things now sorting out under yellow color red color put all the objects over there now that is too much of a knowledge perspective or per se here in this case when we talk about the children uh, it's like bringing the tv remote and keeping exactly at the place where the remote is supposed to be now the remote is supposed to be at that particular place is a habit or a practice that you as an individual have to follow 
it's very difficult i'm pretty sure 90% of us who are there in this session might have the tv remote with you in your hand for the first moment the next moment you will be searching for it all over the place might be there under the sofa probably right below the tv in fact in your hand at times and you still search for it i do not know how many of you do that but the point here is having this uh, prop uh, you know specified locations for things to be present at that particular point brings lot of responsibility for the students so used cloths have to put in the have to be put in that particular bag once the cloths are washed and ironed and things like that they have to be kept over here all these things have to be observed by the children and these are some of the activities that could be done within a home and somewhere this could be called as montessori way of education that's the reason i'm just talking about it and showing this so this particular website which is called as uh, india montessori foundation uh, let me go back and show you how it actually looks like is one of the finest websites for all the teachers out there who are parents as well to go through and do all these activities one by one uh, you might do this up to a certain extent but having a look at the website will give you more guided learning and that's important right i saw one of the videos where a child uh, you know without even uh, it's for, like with, without uh, removing their hand from the dress uh, the coat actually the child just wears it it's like you just place two of your palms in a particular location you just do this and automatically the shirt is worn and you do that automatically the shirt gets folded all these are life skill activities that the children can learn from montessori way of education which i understood during my preparation uh, with this particular website called as uh, india montessori foundation and this is how it looks like yeah so you can come over here and get to know about it and if you want to contact them for a specific session in your school uh, you know that is also done Oh, you keep the remote as a fixed place. So that's pretty much about uh, the Montessori way of education teachers. I hope everyone got some clarity about what's Montessori. Uh, more importantly, when we talk about Montessori, it's not a traditional practice. It's not a curriculum to be followed. It's a methodology. It's a pedagogy. It's something that could be incorporated in our day-to-day -day life, irrespective of CBSC, ICSC, IGCSC, IB, whatever it could be. You can use Montessori way of education. You can call this as experiential learning. but again in experiential learning there are a lot of aspects that we guide the children with here in this case it's completely self directed home schooling predominantly accepts a uh, montessori way of education because home schooling is very expensive the parents can afford to have a proper montessori setup within a school uh, learn about all those people who have actually undergone education under montessori and you'll get a better picture of it montessori certification is also present for the teachers so that you get that certification and you can be placed in a school that can really afford it really afford it it's not an easy thing yeah so that's it from my side teachers i hope you got an understanding on montessori way of education and i would request you to research further about it to prove uh, to be guaranteed that the information that shared in super sunday workshop is authentic do not trust anything that comes on youtube just go through the official documents to get more clarity i'm being very confident about that there's too much of diluted information out there it's very very difficult to find authentic information out there especially in the world of artificial intelligence please do your research and guide the children appropriately yeah so uh, with respect to the announcement the cpd batches are starting from tomorrow uh, you can actually join the batch the teachers the trainers are ready uh, the details are present in the link that's coming um, on the chat section swati is launching it continuously in case if anyone has got any queries please mail it to us or message me the reflection form is also coming on the chat in which you can see my number you can message me directly i'll respond to you with whatever queries you have yeah so that's it from my side thank you so much uh, i'll come meet you with another super sunday workshop in the next sunday uh, next sunday it's also going to be the recognition day for all the people who have been sincerely participating and being very regular to all the super sunday workshop yeah all the very best and jai hind thank you if there is any question you can ask me on the chat right now i'm able to see the chat thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you jhansi ma'am great i hope uh, there was decent amount of awareness <laughs> okay you keep your remotes fixed in your home correct you're right our pre primary schools and special schools all work with these fundamentals you're absolutely right you are absolutely right
below eight year child after that they are not interested come down with growing age mostly ah so they sir can't deny that can't deny that child may not receive the information that what is the difference between materials and may hurt him or herself in your absence uh sangeet ma'am um see that's where uh you as a facilitator comes into picture right uh, uh a montessori classroom is not a classroom without the teacher so it's important for uh the teachers to facilitate the children regularly stating what's harmful what's not what might hurt them what might not so without a teacher even montessori is incomplete children can peel off the piece yeah Oh, Dr. Sarvajit, ma'am, I, I would be happy to help on that regard. All the very best to that. See, national curriculum framework is not connecting to Montessori method to that extent in higher grades from sixth and above. But no, national curriculum framework made for foundational stage speaks heavily about toy-based pedagogy, speaks heavily about play-way method of learning things, which is heavy adaptation of Montessori education. So national curriculum framework, NEP 2020, they, they, I would say nearly 80% of Montessori is somewhere adapted to quite some extent. Yes. Sure, Mary, ma'am. The objective of these sessions are to talk to, uh, you know, the teachers out there, ultimate objective. So hence, that's how the preparation happens. And I would like to keep it that way, at least for, um, you know, another three or four years. Then probably we can have another slot for parents, another slot for students, depending on the time availability and everybody's comfort. Sunday 10 to 11 is definitely not as comfortable as it seems. Uh, you know, people go to church in the morning. I really get a lot of scoldings when, when one of the teachers from a convent school says that you are really, you know, doing. But that's the reason uh, YouTube uh, live uh, became, you know, it got materialized and the information is always stored on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. I'll do that. Yeah, you are a Montessorian. Okay, that's good. Pure Montessori method. Shilpa, ma'am, that's great. Uh, children to daily actions, which are normally... You, wow, amazing. EPL activities. Lovely, lovely. In our diary show. Okay. Yes, uh, Ramya, ma'am, that's the objective. Thank you. Uh, yes, there is some, ma'am, but uh, I'm just talking of few people out there. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, Vasuki, ma'am, that could be done. Uh, in India, no. No, Sai Jyoti, sir. No. Oh, Teresa, ma'am, it's interesting. Thank you so much. Yes, for teachers, you need 50 hours of CPD. It's mandatory. 25 from a private organization or an in-house training arranged by the school, which could be conducted by your principal or it could be in collaboration with some sort of an organization like Super Teacher. But the remaining 25 hours, the first 25 hours has to be conducted or completed with uh, CBSC, CIET, government-based organization like Swayam, uh, Diksha portal and things like that. You're right, Nisha, ma'am. See, another big um, you know, drawback for uh, uh, Montessori to be implemented properly is uh, the pay scale in India. That's, that's quite a challenge. Uh, pay scale in India for a teacher is directly dependent on the pay scale of the parent who is sending the child. Now, this, the, 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 the pay scale of a parent is directly dependent on the organizations that they are working with. In India, the majority of the organizations where the maximum employment happens is not coming under the category of, you know, big salaries out there. It's gradually growing, but it's growing. India is still a country where uh, having a 35,000, 30 to 35,000 salary a month uh, uh, you know, it's 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 a big deal, right? So when we talk about the pay scale, it's altogether a different debate, and uh, I would say discussion, uh, considering a lot of backgrounds. It's not that easy. My parents used to come under not my parents, but my father used to come under uh, the category of below poverty line before his studies. But uh, uh, there was this program called as midday meal program. So just to go and eat food in the school he went to school so there are people out there who actually did their education not that they wanted to get educated 
but the fact that they loved eating i mean they it's not loved eating they did not have the basic footing itself hence it's quite a diverse environment in india to talk about uh, generalization of payment and things like that well right after that out of 1000 people coming to a school for mid day meal program to have the lunch uh, at least 100 of them are interested in further studies right and that's how india got educated so i think uh, when we talk about montessori education and so that, that's what i the irony is that montessori actually started for students who are coming under a section where they can't really afford notebooks and pens and books and they were like with available materials around and that was like really affordable and also for the students who are differently abled especially the mental abilities special children but uh, uh, unfortunately somewhere in the line this became one of the most expensive classroom setups <laughs> yeah uh 25 there are, there will be two board exams and is there any possibility of an open book examination process these are all news which keeps on popping up you're right basudev sir you're absolutely right there are a lot of information on two board exams only one board exam will be selected this and that will will try to declutter all these things when an official announcement is made by cbsc and and i'll have one of the super sunday workshops let's see yeah great yes geeta ma'am you can please click on the link and check or else you can message me ma'am Rashika ma'am, if you are not getting the certificates, please raise it up. Super Sukhvira ma'am, thank you so much. Uh, ma'am, in English uh, or in any language for that matter, the education is very diverse and wide across the globe. Now, some believe in language development uh, from speaking perspective. Uh, some believe in training the students on phonics rather than alphabets. they go into the methodology of sounds of an alphabet and they teach uh, and some so the point here is when you talk about language teaching uh, as of now i didn't come across any particular standard uh, which is really the best everything has been working out and language development has been the fastest and the best before a child actually joins a school in india it's like till 5 years of age so the mother tongue has to be really strong i very strongly recommend mother tongue to be very strong before the age of 5 so that that becomes the base for their thought process whenever you say something to them they they imagine in their mother tongue yeah that metacognitive abilities so it's kind of not so easy to say that if this is applicable or not it also comes from the background where the child is present in uh, shushri ma'am please message me i shall do that okay let's close the session for today thank you so much two years certificate design <laughs> was different but not received all okay oh yashilpa yeah, shilpa ma'am i know that thank you as much needed you can message me on my number ma'am you can see my number on reflection form on the top yeah you will get the certification for this neena ma'am please fill up the reflection form reflection form is mandatory for the certification Thank you, Tamana ma'am. Hima ma'am, thank you. Shushi ma'am, I am messaging you the number. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, sure, Muthu Lakshmi ma'am. Let's contact. Done. That's my number. Okay, so I'm closing for the day, teachers. Yeah, your certificate will be there in your mail. Yes, it will be there always. I'll come meet you again in the next Super Sunday workshop with another amazing and interesting topic that could be of a certain good exposure. Bye, everyone.